and we're back and I'm your host Destiny Johnson and this is Nerd News with Destiny and I'm so excited to talk to you this week about a comic that I read that was a full sensory experience because it wasn't just a comic it's a comic that accompanies an album that a band called Jack the Radio based out of Raleigh North Carolina released during a pandemic so I'm not only going to review the comic but I also talked to the lead vocalist and guitarist of Jack the Radio about this really awesome venture that you should totally check out so without further ado let's talk comics So this comic called Jack the Radio Creatures Anthology is kind of like nothing I've ever read before because not only is it a comic, but it also is a companion to an album put out by a band called Jack the Radio. They sort of, they pull from, you know, sort of country, bluegrass, also rock stuff. They have a really sort of interesting country-ish rock, but not too country, but also not too rock. You'll just have to give them a listen and let me know what you think. But they put together this comic. So George Hodge, the vocalist and guitarist of Jack the Radio, is a comic book nerd. And he had the idea toward the end of recording um, to make this album that they were releasing during a pandemic into also a comic book. And as we know in the comic book industry, things went awry during the pandemic. They are still awry. So I did talk to George a little bit about what that process was like and you'll see his interview soon but I want to tell you about this really unique comic. There have been some bands in the past I can think of Medina Lake, um, Coed and Cambria, My Chemical Romance who have released comics that are sort of their music adjacent right but the interesting thing about the Creatures Anthology is that this isn't sort of in the world of their music this is their music so you can listen to the Creatures album and follow along on the main character Jack's adventures. Each song is sort of a different adventure. It's sort of sci-fi, futuristic, but also western-y, um, and not too far into the vein of Join the Future, which was a comic I talked about last week, which you can find the review for somewhere. It's gonna pop up. Okay. <sighs> but it was really fun because it was a really deep sensory experience where you are reading the comic, listening to the music at the same time, and the lyrics are the comic, which is really interesting. And I really liked it because I find Jack, the character who is a skeleton, not to be confused with Jack Skellington, a really endearing character pretty automatically. Um, he's not super loquacious, but I don't know, he's just really cute and really expressive. And I thought it was so cool how each different song is a sort of story vignette, which is so interesting. And even more than that, 30 different artists worked on this comic book. Um, they, different colorists, different artists from all over the world, which was so cool. And George himself did some of the lettering. It's just a really awesome project. And I think right now in the world, with the way things are, it's so cool to see something that a bunch of people came together to create um, and found, I don't know, just like a middle ground of beautiful art to work on. And I don't know, I think that pairing music and comics is such a natural progression. Music is so... I don't know, evocative of emotion, and it can be so artistic, it is so artistic, and the same goes for comics. And I think even more, the reason why I really enjoyed this is because we've talked about this before on the channel, I'm sure you think about it a lot yourself, but like, we get a hold of comic books and we read them so quickly. You know, the artists spend so much time, the letterers spend so much time um, creating this piece of art for us, and we start a panel for five seconds and it's over. But listening to the music at the same time as you are going through these panels really makes you appreciate and read at a certain pace that we're not really used to. But I found it so refreshing and, I don't know, really interesting, and I would love to experience more comics that way. I think that that's so cool. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure exactly what I was getting into. I admittedly had not heard of Jack the Radio before, um, and so I gave them a listen, and it was... I was into their music and then I paired it with the comic and it was so cool. So I, I really can't recommend this comic enough. I think it's a really unique experience for people who read comics. Um, I'm a frequent comic book reader. Obviously here I am on this channel talking about comics every week. And I never really experienced something like, like that before. So I would recommend it for sure. And I was able to sit down with George Hodge, the vocalist and guitarist from Jack the Radio, and talk to him a little bit about the process, um, about comics, about all sorts of stuff. So uh, thanks to George for sitting down and chatting with me, and here's that interview. Did it work? Hey, Destiny. Hello, there you are. Hi. That took me longer than planned. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I never know really what I'm doing with Zoom. It's uh, hope and a prayer and some plucky attitude. <laughs> Perfect. 
talk to me a little bit about Jack the Radio to start for your band. Yeah, uh, so the band has been around for a little over 10 years, but we took about a five year hiatus uh, these past several years, uh, pursuing other projects, life happening, all that good stuff. Uh, but in the past year and a half now at this point, uh, we really solidified the band with uh, Dan Grinder on bass, uh, Kevin Rader on drums, and then uh, Danny Johnson and I have been playing music together uh, the whole time for 10 years. Um, but yeah, it came together all in the Raleigh area, North Carolina. Um, I don't know if there's anything specific about the band from there. I guess like what what's for people who don't know, what's your sound like if you had to? Oh sure. Yeah, I mean we've we've kind of gone I think strictly on the fun alliteration. Uh, we're out of Raleigh, so we've gone with Roots Rockers. So people like to say Raleigh Roots Rockers, but really the the root side is uh, comes from a little bit of blues, a little bit of country folk. Uh, and then the rock, obviously rock and roll. Um, so uh, I feel like we kind of fall in Americana, uh, country rock, blues rock, um, and then just rock. <laughs> it's so hard to describe sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. I saw somewhere also called swamp rock, which I yes. thought was a great um, adjective for it. Uh, that is, that's my favorite. Um, and that really came from just some, a couple of the songs, especially some of our older songs have kind of like a deep groove uh, and almost like a sludginess and dirtiness and grittiness uh, that yes, uh, a very nice drunk gentleman gave us that gem of a phrase, Swamp Rock. Um, and we, we all loved it. <laughs> um, love that. Shout out to that drunk gentleman. Hope yeah. he's <laughs> doing great. Um, yeah. So you, uh, released an album during a pandemic. Not only did you release an album during a pandemic, but an album with a companion comic book. So, which is why we're chatting, um, can you talk to me a little bit about um, releasing an album during a pandemic? Oh, God. Yeah. It's, it's been the craziest time putting this out. I mean, in the pandemic is like one thing, but it's, it's everything that's evolved or devolved from the pandemic. Uh, as far as like the distributor, you know, Diamond Comics basically shutting down for the first time in history, uh, right when we were launching this thing. Uh, so was lucky enough to work with a publisher, Wave Blue World out of New York City, a great indie publisher. Uh, so when we started kicking this off, we went, uh, we had planned to have it in Diamond Distribution. It went to the catalog uh, at the end of March, uh, which is when everything started shutting down including comic shops across the country, across the world. Uh, so uh, it was a very nerve wracking couple months. Um, I mean, still nerve wracking for people, myself included, but uh, those were especially nerve wracking, uh, thinking it's my first big comic effort, you know, brought in 30 illustrators and colorists to work on this thing, had a publisher, uh, we had planned some convention events. Uh, we always do Heroes Con down in Charlotte every year, which publisher was going to be there. A bunch of the artists were going to be there. Uh, the band was going to be there. Uh, we had shows lined up um, and none of that is possible. Um, and it's absolutely the right decision that these conventions have canceled. Um, but it has been a, a hell of a couple months, <laughs> if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. Uh, putting this out. But there's been a lot of great things around it as well. I, I do feel like uh, people are consuming more at home, um, specifically with the combination of the album and comic. I feel like people are listening to full albums maybe more than they would normally uh, because they're at home. And myself, I've been pulling out vinyl records and uh, listening because I'm at the house basically 24 um, seven. Where in the past, you know, you're, you've got other commitments or you're out of town. So you're not able to really do some of those things. Um, so my hope is now that the album's out and the comic is out that uh, since, since people are sitting at home, it, they'll have more, more time and an, more of an excuse to sit down with the comic, with the record on uh, and hopefully digest and enjoy both of them at the same time. Yeah, well, I mean, let me tell you, it'll be worth the time. I mean, we all have the time now, but I just, I thought it was such an all-encompassing experience to listen oh, awesome. to the music and follow along. I think that that's such a unique experience. I can think of maybe three other bands just off the top of my head who have ever done something like this. And I think that it's such a natural connection, these sorts of oh, things. Oh, yeah. Because 
you know, music is so imaginative and expressive and so is comic books. And, and I, yes. I, um, I was Googling you as, you know, putting on my journalism hat. Um, I saw that you had been sketched into Gambit number two. So you are a comic nerd outside of yes. your music world as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I've done some illustration and design work very outside of comics, but more in the music world and festivals and things like that. But through that, have tabled at conventions, have been going to conventions for years, um, and love comics. Um, and again, another good byproduct of, of COVID is, I'm sure like yourself, uh, have a very large read pile next to my desk uh, that I'm slowly working through, not anywhere near at the rate that I'm buying books. Um, but that's another nice, nice thing that's been happening. Um, but yeah, that was awesome. Uh, We've had some other uh, kind of Easter egg appearances in comics as well. Um, so that's that's been super cool. And, you know, definitely, I think, helped inspire uh, wanting to do this book. <laughs> and you lettered the entire book, right? Not, not the whole thing. So not the whole thing? Okay. There was a couple artists that lettered, hand lettered their stories, and then a couple artists that wanted to letter their own stories. But I lettered uh, maybe four or five. Oh, okay. I, I feel like every so often I was, you know, I, I was trying to not get too caught up in the beginning part and just kind of listen yeah. through. But I did see your name several times lettering that. Yeah. How was that? It was, again, nerve wracking. So, I mean, I've, I've done design work for years, but I've never lettered a comic book. You know, I've created uh, branding materials and marketing materials uh, where I've done lettering, but not comic book lettering. So, Definitely did some homework on the rules. Um, I'm sure journalism has a lot of very similar rules that I don't know that you know. And um, if I tried to do your job, I would have to go research all of that stuff. Um, but no, it was awesome. And it was, I mean, it was so exciting to be able to collaborate with a lot of these artists that have been buying their books or buying art from or have talked to at conventions. Uh, so to be able to collaborate with them as a writer on these stories um, and then having for some of them have that extra element of getting to letter on their work was exciting and nerve wracking at the same time. And, uh, you know, tried to try to take the extra effort to get a uh, sign off on things because I'm like, just to make sure I'm doing this right. And they, they don't see this book on the shelf and look at it and they're like, what the hell did George do to my beautiful art? Um, so it was awesome. Now that it's done, I can say it was absolutely awesome. <laughs> yes, the hindsight, the um, stress relieving. But I, I mean, I, I don't know. I only read a lot of comics. I don't know nothing about nothing, <laughs> but it looked great. Um, <laughs> but how, I guess, how did that shake out? Were you, when as you were writing for the album, were you like, this is definitely, I'm writing with it in mind that this is going to turn into something visual as well? I mean... It is visual music. You have yeah, to perform yeah. it, and also like there are music videos and stuff. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, in a print media. Yeah, I mean it. The, the comic definitely was an idea towards the end of the recording process. Um, you know, it's something I've always had in the back of my mind, like wanted to do a comic book with the music in some way, shape, or form, but never knew how to do that. Never had the resources to do it. Um, never had the time to do it. Um, but there were two songs in particular on the record, Don't Count Me Out and the title track Creatures that lyrically were very visual songs and uh, told a story and kind of had a middle beginning and end uh, in that three and a half minute song. Um, so those were ones I, I originally toyed around with the idea of like, these would be cool sequential stories. I've met some people that do that professionally or know how to do that very well. So I just reached out and just to gauge interest. At that point, I didn't have scripts or anything nailed down. So uh, got the initial response. Matt Allison, who's one of my favorite indie artists, does a book called Kankor, um, and someone I've been able to hang out with and get to know over the past couple of years. He said yes. So I was like, all right, this is a win. Let me get a script together and let's go from there. And then you know, got those first two done, started another one. And then it was like, well, why don't I try to do these for more songs and didn't really know where it was going. But by the end of it had artists and scripts for every song on the record and uh, very pleased that 
everything was able to get done in time and people were able to meet meet the commitments and we were excited about it and the art that they delivered was beyond my expectation. Yeah, it's so cool because not only is it, you know, comic wise, is it sort of vignettes of the main character doing yeah. different things, but also um, it, you can really feel the transition because the art changes, you know, there are so yeah. many different artists working on it and each artist has its own, their own style and flavor. And so it's um, really visually appealing from that standpoint. Like um, when I saw that it was 51 pages at first, I was like, oh, I'm going to be here for a minute. And then, I, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, it did not, it certainly did not feel like it was long because you just wanted to keep going because each new story awesome. was like a, a, a new bite and you were very um, like refreshed from that standpoint. So it was That's a huge really, compliment. really cool. Yeah, it was great. I, 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 yeah, honestly, I was like, oh, I don't know if I have time to read this right now. <laughs> and, but it, like, it went through like a breeze. And then also listening to the music, you don't even realize that it's just moving on along. It just feels really cohesive that way. Which oh, that's so cool. cool. Yeah, it was really great. I really enjoyed it. So um, do you think that you'll take on a venture like this again? Or do you think it was kind of a one shot sort of thing or? No, I mean, I would absolutely love to expand on some of the stories that we started in the comic. Um, and it's, I would love to work with these artists again. I mean, everybody that I reached out to, I'm a fan of their work um, and a fan of them as humans for the, for the group that I've actually met and hung out with. Um, so would absolutely love to work with people again. Um, and I think in a perfect world would be able to take those couple page stories and actually make, you know, eight page stories or make single issues um, out of those is, is the dream. We'll, we'll see what everybody has time for. Um, but I, it, it would be a blast. Sorry, there are two dogs here that are very loud. They were being loud, so I was waiting for them to be loud somewhere else. Nice. Um, anyway, I yeah, there were definitely, I mean, more than one story that left me wanting for more, you know what I mean? Oh, awesome. Like, I wish this was like um, like a series, you know? Um, so I would, I think people would be really excited to see something like that. Because I think, um, and this leads into my next question, Jack is a really likable character for somebody who doesn't say a hell of a whole lot. <laughs> right? You know, like he's not a super loquacious guy, but I yep. think in an incredible, like the artist did an incredible job of taking the lyrics that you had already written and making him so expressive. Yes. And so I guess my question is, how did he come to be? Um, and he yeah. is not a human. He is a skeleton guy, um, yep. which you mentioned a little bit in the forward of the comic about why. So if you could just speak a little bit to that. Yeah, I mean... Uh, you know, when I do design projects, a lot of the time I'm trying to think about who's the audience, who's going to be viewing this, uh, is anything that I'm drawing castigating anyone from this experience? Um, and it's, to a degree, it's like a cop-out, but a skeleton can be anybody. Um, so I've always been drawn to skeletons, and for many reasons. I mean, coming from the music background, I feel like the Grateful Dead and the amazing artists that worked with the Grateful Dead have ingrained like skeleton figures into music and psychedelia and like rock and roll and all that stuff. So it's it's a quick a quick thing to go with. But you know, wanted to give it give the character a little bit more elements. But you know, the first thing I wanted people to be able to see themselves in the character, and uh, he definitely is more masculine than anything. But I still hope. You know, I still I visualize uh, country singers like Randy Carlisle, um, who's uh, wears the similar suits and like has a cool swagger and like just as a cool person. It seems like a cool person. I don't know her, um, but also wanted to give the character elements of like the rock and roll, the western, the sci-fi, um, and he's he's got some different looks in the book. And um, I I think yeah I think also wanted the character to not there's not a lot of dialogue because he's not all knowing like he doesn't really know what's going on he's kind of meandering through these different scenarios and um i i also relate to that uh that uh you know i try to put a little bit of myself in there and i hope people it's general enough and open enough that that you can apply your own life uh to the character as well 
Yeah, I think that uh, Let's Be Real is one of my favorite ones. And I think that he is extremely relatable in that one, just sort of awesome. like, like bumbling around, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, oh, this poor, like, you feel so bad for him. <laughs> like, yeah. you, know, you just, you want to see him succeed because he's really, I mean, he's very endearing for a character. Yeah. He doesn't oh, say much, who's, you know, just not, and he's not stoic either. So it's, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes you get those characters who have like four dialogue lines, but they're like tough. He would never talk to them. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> very approachable from that standpoint. But yeah. um, if you had to say, I guess, what is the, what did you find most rewarding about this process besides having a, a book in your hand? Cause that must be very. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, and that, you, you know, you mentioned earlier, it's just, a, it's a huge way just to finally have it done and in hand. And it's, it's like, oh, it actually exists now. But I mean, I guess two two main things that I, I got out of this was one, it was like a master class on how to make a comic book and how to make an anthology comic. Um, I for me it was invaluable as a fan and as someone that creates art as well, not comics, but to see how people work, um, to get to in real time enjoy uh seeing something go from a, a rough script to thumbnails, to pencils, to inks, to colors, to the lettering, um, and then kind of see how that all came together in the end and figuring out how to lay it out in a book uh, from all these different people from around the world. That was a huge uh, win for me, was to get to experience that and to, to see that from so many different people because everybody works a little different, uh, everyone's process is a little different. Communication styles are a little different, um, but it was, I, I loved it. Um, the other big thing that I, I didn't think about really until it was done, uh, because we were doing a lot of this uh, in March and April during uh, the initial impact, at least in the US with COVID, um, was I was getting to talk with several people at a time in, in different countries like Spain and Brazil and Canada in several states in the US that um, it definitely helped feel like I was less alone um, and that we were all like, everyone's going through this at the same time. Um, and you, you know that, but it, if you're not talking to people as much, you may not really think about it. Um, but that was like a really nice byproduct of the whole situation was being able to interact with people and hear you know, how, how things were in their state or in their country and, um, and, and kind of get our minds off that a little bit too, by talking about the project and about the art. And, um, so yeah, those were the two biggest things that, that were huge. Yeah. And in my review, I, I talk about how it feels, this comic feels really timely because so many people came together to work on it and so many people yeah. came together to work on a common goal and that is something we're seeing across the country for many different reasons and you know yes. it's just sort of working cohesively for a, a, a better good is a message that you can yeah. find in several of the songs and you oh, awesome. feel for for jack who's tr just trying to do the right thing a lot of the time so yeah, yeah. you know um I, I found that pretty timely for what's going on um and so I enjoyed it from that aspect as well That's awesome. um, yeah and so the last thing I'm going to bother you with is um if you I'm could <laughs> if you could appeal to comic book readers and let them know I guess in your elevator pitch why they should read this comic I mean I'm going to tell them I really enjoyed it I'm going to give a good <laughs> review of it but from you know awesome. from your own mouth you worked so hard on it um why people should listen yeah. and also read at the same time yeah absolutely I mean I think if not this this book to me is definitely for fans of like heavy metal magazine uh anything sci-fi western um it brings all that together but it's also got futuristic sci-fi elements, but it's also got very modern day, not super sci-fi uh, stories in there as well that I think relate to people um, and relate to real life. Um, I would highly recommend streaming the album or getting the album and enjoying it with the book. I think it's, um, like you said, I, I've seen it a couple of times, so we're, we're definitely not the first people to do this, but I think it's something not a lot of people are doing that I would love to see uh, more in comic books um, it is getting all your senses hit at one time with the story with the audio um, and just I think it's it's a cool alternate comic book reading experience 
Totally agree. Yeah, it's good. Are you reading anything right now? Uh, yeah, I actually went to the shop today um, and I picked up, I did some impulse purchases. I got some old Johnny Quest books strictly for the covers. Never read Johnny Quest in my life, but it had Johnny Quest on a motorcycle with a woman with a guitar. So I was like, I got to pick this up. Uh, but Space Riders, I mean, a lot of the artists that worked on this book, like I said, I've, I'm a fan of. So I uh, picked up the new Cancor trade that Ad House just put out. It's gorgeous and the, it feels amazing. Like uh, talking about your senses again, like it's, it's a cool book. Uh, picked up the new Space Riders. Uh, I've been reading Middle West. Um, yeah, and some random books I just picked up. I like Middle West. I'm behind, but I like it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm pretty much behind on every book that I read. Yeah, same. Um, i trying to think what the other book I just picked up. I mean, like Silver Surfer Black. Um, nice, yeah. I've, I've backed off a lot of the big two stuff the past, like, two years. Um, they're still doing some stuff that I enjoy, but I just, I can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, same. It's like every time I feel like I'm really invested in a comic, they reboot it, and then I'm sad. So. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I kind of started following writers or artists um, that I, and, and more so artists that I like. I'll buy kind of whatever they work on, um, which is sometimes good. And some, the art's always good, but sometimes the books aren't as good. But Yeah, uh, they say you should follow writers, but I'm, I don't do that because I, <laughs> yeah. I don't like to listen, I guess. Well, um, <laughs> it's fine. Great. Well, that's all I have for you, unless there's anything else you want people to know or anything you'd like to plug. I, of course, will plug your guys' uh, website, your social media, all that stuff. That's, perfect, that'll go on perfect. the screen somewhere at some point. Um, so unless perfect. there's anything else you'd like to chat about, that's all I had for you. Again, I can't stress enough. This comic was really, really interesting to me. It was such a unique experience in the read, and I really love Jack. I think he's so cute, and I would love to read more about him. Um, I loved all his different looks. I loved all the different art styles. It kept it really fresh and moving, as well as the music did. I don't know. It's just so cool. I recommend you pick it up and stream or buy the album, like George said, and just, I don't know, give it a go. We have a lot of time on our hands right now, so I think it's worth the effort, and uh, I found it really relaxing, so, you know. Yeah, I definitely would recommend this comic and I hope that there is more in the sort of creatures universe, the Jack the Radio universe. So that is my comic recommendation for the week and we can move on to nerd news. And this week, it's sort of an exciting nerd news for me because Wishbone, do you guys remember Wishbone, the little terrier who loved classic literature and would venture into the classic literature worlds? Ah, he's getting his own show. It's gonna be a live action feature from Mattel. I don't really understand what Mattel has to do with it. I'm sure I could Google it, but I'm really excited because I loved Wishbone growing up. Um, I'm a big dog person. I've always been a big dog person, but I always, I don't know, I just loved it. He would disappear <laughs> into these classic works of literature. Like I remember him being in like some Shakespeare with like a cute little hat with a feather in it. And I don't know, I think that's just so cute. And I think it's such a cool way to introduce kids into classic literature. Um, and I will watch it as a full grown, almost 30 year old lady pumped hope you're pumped too people around my age will probably remember and have fond memories of wishbone like i do so please let me know <laughs> if you're excited for the live action wishbone it's very silly i know um but i think it's really cute and it's definitely nerdy so let me know what you think about it and thanks so much for joining me this week it's really all i have for you but i will see you next week same ish time same place and until then this has been nerd news of destiny